The big question hanging over Europe's banks, can they withstand the debt crisis in the Eurozone's most troubled nations? Well, Moody's says they can. And for more, we partner with the FT to bring you Lex on Bloomberg so you can get a sneak peek at the Financial Times flagship column a day early. Richard Stoven Bradford is with us now live from London. Richard, Moody's takes a look at European banks and says they're safe. What do you think? It reminds me a little bit of Marathon Man, that movie with Dustin Hoffman and uh, Is It Safe? I think we've got, to, we've got to go with Moody's idea that it's done a stress test on 30 banks and it reckons they have adequate capital to absorb their exposure, loss on their exposure to, to loans to Greece, Spain, Portugal and Ireland. But um, that is just one point of view. OK, uh, what's the other point of view? We seem to be getting one from the markets. We certainly are. Look at the way that European bank share prices have taken a pounding. Look at the way that European interbank funding, the euro eyeball rate, has gone up and the London-based one has also gone up but by less. Look at the way that dollar LIBOR funding has gone up in London. Look at the way that CDS spreads have blown wider. So the markets seem to know something. And don't forget that banks lending to each other have a pretty good idea of who is and who isn't sucking in liquidity. So I think we must be sceptical about the report, and there's probably good reason for that. And we should point out, Richard, that this report doesn't take into account anything that might happen with a change in capital requirements uh, through Basel III. Is that right? Absolutely. As far as I'm aware, we haven't, we haven't got that far, and that's still an unknown. We haven't got final, final data on that. But what, what we're really seeing here is, if you like, concern in the markets about the, the absolute level of exposure. And on the other hand, um, rating agencies doing their bit and saying it's all fine, it's all safe. But don't forget that these banks that they're talking to are mainly listed banks. And the problem in Europe lies in the unlisted sector. We've seen Spanish savings banks, the Cajas, suffering and having to merge, being forced to merge. One was rescued by the Bank of Spain. We've seen Germany's Landesbank and clearing out stacks of toxic assets. The real problem is, and Morgan Stanley reckons that Cajas will need about 43 billion euros, so 51 billion extra dollars of capital just to plug their gap. The bigger concern has still got to be in the unlisted environment. So, Richard, let's say you're an investor, put yourself in his or her shoes. You're listening to the Moody's, or at least you're reading the Moody's report. On the other hand, you're listening to the market, seeing credit default swap spreads rise. Where do you go? Do you go towards the market? Do you go towards Moody's or do you come down somewhere in the middle? I'm, I'm going more with the market at the moment. The banks have come clean, some of them anyway. The listed ones have come clean about their exposures. So I feel relatively happy about some of the French and the Italian banks and the Spanish banks. Um, but I, I do worry about those unlisted ones. So I'm going to be, I, but on the whole, I'm going to steer clear and go for banks that have got exposure outside Europe. So if I go to Spain, I'm going to pick Santander for its Latin American exposure or BBVA for its Latin American exposure. In Santander's case, probably uh, only about a quarter of its profits come from inside Spain. So elsewhere banking is becoming a lot more interesting. In the UK, I'd look at HSBC on that basis because of its Asian exposure and Standard Chartered too. Richard, thank you very much. Richard Stoven Bradford from the Lex Desk.